everybody! Today I'm doing the foundation tag video and I was tagged by my friend Mariah here on YouTube and I also watched uh, Kristen Games' video on this topic and I just think it's a really nice way to chat about a lot of different foundations, some good, some not so good. And something I should probably point out first off is what my skin type is and what kinds of foundations I normally like. Um, I've really settled into a very normal skin type here lately. Uh, prior to pregnancy I felt like I had pretty classic combination skin. My skin was very normal overall, but would tend to get kind of oily in the T-zone area. And then toward the start of pregnancy, I got very, very dry in certain areas. Dealt with some very patchy, dry skin. And now I feel like everything really has evened out to a very normal place. And I have dealt with some major discoloration in the form of melasma, which shows up in kind of a dark uh, patchiness on the tops of the cheeks. I've done a whole video on this if you want, like, way more info. But for me, it was triggered by horror hormone changes. Pregnancy definitely brought it out quite a bit. And just in terms of the kinds of foundations I like to use, they are generally uh, really good coverage and good staying power. Those are probably my top two priorities. First question is best packaging, and there are definitely several different ways I could have gone with this, but the one I'm going to choose is actually my Bobbi Brown Skin Foundation Stick. Um, I think a stick foundation is so, so handy and simple, and this one in particular I think just looks so nice. You know, it looks very very high end, and it wasn't exactly cheap, so there's a reason for that, but um, I just love how it twists up. It's very simple to use from a variety of standpoints, whether it's as a concealer or all over your face, but strictly thinking about packaging is just awesome because, you know, it's not going to leak out on you, it's not going to squeeze out, it's not really going to break, you know, and bust open and ooze everywhere. It's just a nice little stick, so I've always enjoyed uh, stick foundations, and I really like this packaging in particular. Number two is best color payoff. And for me, this this question seems like it would pertain more to um, different color cosmetics as opposed to a foundation. So I'm going to go ahead and change this question and call it best coverage. The best coverage foundation, no surprises here, it is the Estee Lauder Double Wear Maximum Cover for face and body. This is an incredible foundation for those of you out there who are dealing with major discoloration. This isn't the kind of foundation that everybody needs to be using because it is super, super heavy duty coverage. So for me, um, dealing with my melasma, which has started to fade since I've given birth, but uh, for a time there it was especially dark and this is the best thing to cover it up. I love it so much because it does not need the help of concealers. Under a lot of circumstances, I don't even feel like this needs um, a setting powder on top of it. It really just does it all. It's a great kind of one-step fix for problems like that. And so I fully understand that there are going to be a lot of people out there who do not need this level of coverage, but if you've been battling something major discoloration-wise on your skin, this is like the answer to a prayer right here. If you feel like this is looking too heavy, you probably are using too much of this. You can really get by using very little because of how easily and beautifully this spreads across the skin. So just really keep it at a bare minimum amount. And I love blending this in with a foundation brush like my Sigma F80 or one of those um, kind of dense, full foundation type brushes. It really buffs it in quickly and evenly. And I just love the coverage I get from this. The next question is most versatile slash buildable. And the one I'm going to talk about for that is my Revlon Color Stay Whipped. Um, I do feel like this is a really buildable foundation. I think you can apply just a very sheer amount of this. It's very easy to blend in, but you can continue to build it up, add a little bit more in certain places, and actually build up the coverage of this product. So definitely buildable while still keeping what I think is a very skin-like natural appearance. I've used this on people in weddings. It looks fabulous in pictures. It has amazing staying power, but it's equally as good for just your random everyday foundation that you might be reaching for constantly. So I think it's very versatile, very buildable. Number four is best for travel, and when I think about times that I've been traveling, I want a foundation that's kind of like a low margin for error with application because sometimes when you're going somewhere you don't have your ideal lighting. You don't have maybe even a great place to put your makeup on and so you don't want a foundation that's going to be tricky to apply or something you really have to be super careful with. I think you want something that's easy to throw on and odds are even if all factors aren't perfect around you it's going to probably look good. So I chose a powder foundation from NYX. It's the Stay Matte But Not Flat Powder 
foundation. I've talked about this a lot. I think it has a gorgeous finish on the skin. You know, it truly does mattify, but it doesn't look too cakey and dry. So with something like this, I would go ahead and conceal first, you know, dab on the concealer on the under eyes or wherever I need it, and then take a brush to this product. Um, one that does give really full coverage, let me grab it here, is from e.l.f. and it is the e.l.f. powder brush. It's a nice flat top brush, buffs into the skin, gives, I think, really optimal coverage for this kind of product. For a little bit lighter coverage, you know, just lightly sweeping this powder on, I would go with something more like the e.l.f. complexion brush. But also, where travel is concerned, you can't beat a product that does have the mirror there for you as well. So if you're truly, like, traveling as you apply this, it's even good in that respect as well. Number five is biggest regret, and as I was looking through my foundations and trying to figure out how I would answer this, I started to realize that I really don't have a lot of foundation regrets because even if it's a foundation that I don't like, um, I still am able to share a review on it and hopefully help somebody and I don't ever regret doing that. So that being said, I just chose one for this question that I don't use much or like much at all and it is the L'Oreal Magic Nude Liquid Powder. This is something I reviewed uh, last year on my blog and this is an extremely liquidy foundation, like the most liquidy one I have. You could just pour it right out of the bottle. It's a very lightweight coverage product and it does not have very good staying power on me. So those are two of my biggest priorities for a foundation and it does not execute on those things. Maybe if you've just got amazing skin and you just want the lightest touch of coverage possible, this might be something you're into, but for me it was kind of a no-go. Number six, best color names. This again seems like a question very much geared toward um, the color cosmetics that do have a lot of fun names because I don't really look at my foundations and think, oh, uh, Creamy Natural, that shade name really speaks to me, you know, uh, not so much. So I tried to think about a brand and a line of foundations that I think lays out their color selection really nicely and makes it easy to choose from. And um, the line that I think does this really well is actually L'Oreal's True Match foundations. They've got the regular True Match and like I've got the True Match Lumi here, but they kind of divide up their foundations and color families. So you have warm, cool, and neutral. For example, this is an N5. So I think they have a really nice spectrum of colors and then it's also broken down in kind of an easy to figure out system. And then if you want to get the right powder for you, you know, you can just look at those letters and numbers and figure it out that way. Number seven, least used. This would probably be my Alme Smart Shade Mousse Makeup. If you saw my uh, review on the Express channel on this product, you probably know why. Um, this is a really kind of unusual foundation that is sort of colorless like the uh, regular Smart Shade Squeezy Tube foundation is. And then it sort of develops into a color as you blend it into your skin. But I was just not a fan of this. This did not pack enough of a color punch on me. It didn't do a good job of providing coverage. Not a fan of this product. Wouldn't really recommend it. And I don't use it much. But the number eight question, saving the best for last, I guess, uh, is most used. And for me, it's got to be Estee Lauder Double Wear. Um, definitely that max coverage has been something I used a lot over like the past several months dealing with the dark melasma type issues. But thinking back over the span of like the last couple years, overall I think my most used is just the classic Estee Lauder Double Wear, which even in comparison to this, it's not as full coverage as this version, but it still has amazing coverage, I think. And I think on my skin, this maintains a really fresh look. Um, over the course of an entire day and into the night. And I think foundation is just so important for that. You know, if you expect your bronzer to last and your blush to last and anything else you're putting on top, I think it really comes down to the foundation you've got underneath it as to how well everything's going to last. If you do feel like this has turned out to be too much or too heavy for you, but you do want that really hardcore staying power, you might look into the light version of this product. That's really, really good as well. And it looks like that's all for the foundation tag. Um, it really forces you to dig into your collection and figure out what you think about certain things. So I think this would be a lot of fun for any other video makers or bloggers out there to do. But thank you so much for taking time to watch and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!